Hello and welcome to the Climbing Daily Friday Gear Show. Today we're going to be looking at a shoe and a brand that has been making high-end climbing shoes since almost 1991. That's 20 years of experience and yet we haven't really heard of this brand. Baldrini are an exciting niche company coming up with new ideas in a saturated marketplace. Now, I first tried a pair of Baldrini climbing shoes a couple of years ago, and honestly, I really wasn't impressed. I didn't like the rubber, I didn't like the shoes, and I just didn't get on with them. But I was given this pair of Baldrini Panteras to try out, and I thought, because they look sophisticated, kind of cool, yet kind of old school all at the same time, they deserve another chance. Now, before we get into the technicalities of the shoe, let's talk a little bit about Baldrini. Now, this was started by Andrea Baldrini, and their remit, their plan, was to make high-end, quality, slipper-style climbing shoes for everyday climbers. They're aiming for performance and precision with still a comfortable shoe package. They want a slipper that is going to perform but not torture your feet. Now, around about 2009, they developed a system called FCS, Full Contact Sole. Now, for you climbing geeks out there, this is an awful lot like No Edge technology from La Sportiva. Now, the idea of this is to improve the stiffness and precision near the edge while still maintaining sensitivity in the midsole. And you can see there's no defined edge. It kind of rolls over onto the top part of the shoe. Now, we could spend an awful lot of time talking about this style, this No Edge system. However, we've got other videos on that. But if you're interested in a no edge style shoe, then this needs to prick up your attention because the technology being used in this is similar to that La Sportiva and perhaps even superior. Now this is a downturned aggressive shoe aimed at the boulderous amongst us. And as you can see, it is downturned. However, it has slightly folded up during use. The second you put it back on your feet though, it does go back to that desired shape. Now they call this a slipper style design because of the lack of Velcro, but you do get one big Velcro strap across the top. And personally, I really appreciate this. I have narrow feet and one strap allows the whole shoe to be tightened up far better than a slipper would be. For me, if I put a slipper on, it always feels a little bit flappy, a bit like it's gonna fall off at any second. And I really appreciate that Velcro closing system. I like the styling on this shoe. It looks sophisticated, well thought out. For example, the carbon fiber style-esque detail on the Velcro is really cool, as are the little cutout sections, both on the Velcro strap itself and on the main body of the shoe. When I look at this shoe, I think streamlined. And for me, that's exactly what you want to have on your feet, especially when bouldering hard. Baldrini use Formula Tractor rubber, which is 4.5 millimeters thick. Now, do not judge the shoe or the rubber on your first session. This is really important. For me, the first time I wore these shoes, they were slippery, unresponsive, and a bit rubbish. But because I take these tests seriously and I persevere, I carried on wearing the shoe, and very quickly, the rubber wears in. It just needs to be used a bit, scuffed up, and suddenly, it becomes unbelievably sticky. But if you were to just try this shoe on, perhaps at a gym, you might be a bit disappointed. Don't judge it by that. Give this shoe some time. Now, the 4.5 millimeter thickness seems to go against what Baldrini are trying to do. It's a bouldering shoe. We're expecting bouldering shoes to be super soft, super sensitive, but at 4.5 millimeters, that's pretty thick. So how does it work? Well, somehow the shoe does manage to retain that sensitivity, but having that extra thickness does make it extremely durable, and that is excellent for both indoor and outdoor climbing. This is a high performance shoe that won't just fall to bits the second you give it some abuse. Now, 
There is a set tension system built into this shoe that provides stability on overhanging boulders and extra support for toe hooking. And we should talk about toe hooking, because if you spend any time in a modern climbing wall, you'll know that root setters love to shove in a toe hook. This is part of modern day climbing shoes and especially bouldering shoes. And the Baldrini is a good toe hooker. Initially, I thought that the difference in height size between this bit of rubber and that bit of rubber, that little bump in the middle would cause problems. But in reality, it actually almost improves things. It adds a little hook that you can sometimes catch if you're absolutely desperate. So how do I find this full contact style system, this lack of edge on the shoe? It's a bit tricky for me to really say because I haven't had a huge amount of experience with this style of sole. Yeah, I've used the Futuras a little bit, but not extensively. So really this was like a first timer trying this new system and I quite like it. I haven't noticed a huge amount of difference, but what I have noticed is that you don't need to be particularly precise on your footholds. You can sort of wodge this in, hit the point and the shoe will tend to stay there. And that's a bit different from an edge shoe. With an edge shoe, if you miss it and you're right on that edge or just slightly underneath it in the wrong point, the shoe can roll off that hold. So if you're really into on sighting sport routes or bouldering routes, then this shoe is something worth considering. Baldrini put a lot of emphasis into comfort on their shoes and to back that up there's a 100% microfiber inside and a heel tension system that keeps your foot in the right place. Do I think comfort's that important for a bouldering shoe? No, honestly. I mean, you tend to take off your shoes between bouldering problems. However, it is nice to have. I tend to just leave these on my feet for big session parts of the session, and I like that extra comfort. Why suffer if you don't have to? Heel hooking is something that I struggle with in a lot of climbing shoes. Again, probably due to my narrow feet. These, no real complaints. It's not extraordinarily good, but it's not bad. It just does the job very well. The heel itself is quite simple. There's no little extra 3D protrusions hanging on there. Put simply, it will heel hook and it requires you to put a lot of technique in, which is nice. There is an issue with this, but I'll discuss that in more depth in a second. Sizing wise, I'm a UK 9, 9.5, and this is a UK 8. So I've gone down quite a lot from my street shoe size. Now I'm always a bit wary to recommend fit to you guys because obviously it's so personal to you, but I think I'm safe to say that you need to go down a little bit in size for the Baldrini shoe to fit properly. Remember, it's a performance shoe. It's meant to be tight. My issues with this shoe are to do with the amount of material in it. Sometimes I feel like it needs to go on a bit of a diet, especially for something that's meant to be really elite level high end. There's just quite a lot of material in the front of the shoe. And although the rest of the fit is perfect, that slight bag, that just little bit extra is a bit irritating when I'm doing very precision-y if that's a word, style moves. The whole thing just needs tightening up a bit, perhaps a little less material on top. I don't know, I'm no shoe expert, but yeah, a little bit of a diet needed. It's a similar story with the heel section. It started off very tight, wrapped around my foot nicely, but as the whole shoe has stretched, the heel has become slightly flappy. Now, this is something you'd expect after about eight weeks of intensive use, and I don't think it's really a problem. All shoes change and adapt over their lifespan, but it is worth considering when you're thinking about sizing for this shoe. So what do I think of this shoe? Well. Straight up, I absolutely love it and I've really enjoyed using it. I didn't expect to like it so much, but very quickly it's been the shoe that I put into my bag for every type of session. The comfort of the shoe is something I've been impressed with. Yes, I don't put a huge amount of emphasis on comfort, but it is nice to wear a high-end shoe that doesn't torture your feet. I've been using it extensively indoors because, you know, it's snowing in Chamonix and that means that I've been abusing it on some plastic holds and although there's a tiny little hole developing in the front, the whole shoe has generally stood up to a lot of abuse really well. That full contact sole system, what's my opinion on that? I like it, it works really well. I don't notice a huge difference, kind of positive or negative about it, but I do find the ability to crack it onto a hold and then somehow it just stays there to be really interesting. And it's certainly something that I've been impressed with and I'd like to explore further and more in the future. 
I think the Pantera makes a great training and bouldering shoe, although you do have to think outside of the box when you're thinking of bouldering shoes. The rubber is quite stiff. Now, personally, I like that in a shoe, but for people who are expecting something soft and supple and uber bendy, they are gonna be perhaps a bit disappointed by this. However, it makes it more versatile, so you can use it more things, but the counter side of that is it's therefore less specialized. So if you're looking for a super soft, lightweight, sensitive slipper, look elsewhere. But if you're looking for a stiffer, more all-round shoe, the Pantera is a fantastic choice. Now we should talk about price at this point. The Pantera on the Epic TV shop, currently at the time of filming, is around about 95 euros. Now when you compare that to the La Sportiva Futura, which is around about 140 euros, there is a significant price difference between the two. This shoe offers excellent value for money at a high performance level. So well worth considering if you don't want to spend all that money on a brand new pair of Las Sportivas. There are two types of people in this world. Those who like the tried and tested the normal or those who are looking for something slightly different. There will not be many people wearing Baldrini shoes at your crag or gym. And for some people, that niche aspect makes this the perfect shoe. That paired with the high performance and fairly good value of it makes it very exciting if you're a boulderer looking for something a bit snazzy. So there you go, that's my opinion on the Baldrini shoe and I'd be super interested in finding out yours because my opinion changed throughout the testing of this shoe. Now there's links in the description if you wanna pick one up and if you do use it, do let me know in that comment section below. Thanks for watching, have an amazing weekend and I'll see you soon.